Whether it's a bad dream or a full-on fit, nightmares and night terrors are scary business. In the middle of the night, he's screaming, he's kicking, he's flailing his arms, he's fighting in, the, in his sleep, and he's just beating us up in his sleep, basically. So it, it is a little tough on us, and it'll go on for a few minutes. Kevin and Dana Ebanks experienced night terrors with their now two-year-old son, Jace. He just would wake just screaming in the middle of the night, and then crying, and then we just go in there and just hug him and hold him and you know rock him, sing ABCs to him. Try not to wake him up. I didn't know what it was. I just figured he's here with us and nobody else is in the room with him, so it, he's got to be having a nightmare or something. Renowned author and pediatrician Dr. Alan Green says nightmares actually help us cope with tough situations. Nightmares happen. We know from people who've had traumatic experiences that afterwards there's a predictable series of nightmares that you have. First you dream about the event, then you dream about the same emotion as the event but with different symbols or different things going on. Then you dream about after that the event or the emotions connected to other parts of your life. You're processing, you're learning. It's an important way to learn about how to deal with bad stuff that you're afraid of or that's happened. And while most textbooks say nightmares begin around age three, Dr. Green disagrees. He says babies dream at least twice as much as adults. So I think if babies are dreaming more on the first day of life than any time after that, why wouldn't they be dreaming about and processing childbirth or injections or circumcision or things like that? Uh, it seems to me that anything worth crying about is probably worth dreaming about. So I think nightmares start early. Dr. Green says nightmares usually peak around ages three to five. When kids do wake up from a nightmare, they are scared, they deserve comfort, and it's a really good thing to give them a hug and to reassure them. But the other way that kids process difficult things is through play. Whoa. So if you can learn what they were having nightmares about, it's great to play around the same topics. <laughs> so if they were dr dreaming about monsters, then you know, watch Monsters, Inc. or play with toy monsters or, or incorporate that into play. Nightmares can't be prevented completely, but that's not a bad thing. Dr. Green says nightmares are a part of learning and growing. A bad dream isn't a failed dream. It's actually a successful dream. Night terrors are a different story. Night terrors are completely different from nightmares. Night terrors happen when kids get stuck between different stages of sleep. They're not dreaming, they're not conscious, there's no scary image in their mind. It's just this complete adrenaline rush and they'll scream, they're not, wake, they're not awake, they don't recognize parents. They're screaming and it, it scares parents. Kevin says Jace's night terrors were rough on the whole family. No! It's kind of tough, but uh, if you can get some sleep the next day or something like that, because it, it might be rough on you physically, emotionally, um, because it, it's, it's very trying. But Dr. Green has a solution. It turns out that kids have night terrors at about the same age they're learning how to wake up when their bladder gets full. And when the bladder gets full, it sends signals up to the brain, and sometimes it's not quite enough to wake them up, but not quite enough to let them sleep, and a night terror happens. So if you take your child into the bathroom and get them in front of the toilet, often they won't recognize the parents, but they'll recognize the toilet, and they'll go. And the night terror stops instantly. It's the easiest way to do it. Not for all kids, but most it works really well. And unlike nightmares, night terrors can be prevented. Night terrors tend to happen when kids are overtired, um, and they tend to happen when sleep schedules have been disrupted recently, or if they've had too much to drink right before bed. So just making sure your child gets good rest, try to keep the wake up and sleep time the same every day if you can, and uh, make sure that their bladder's empty before they go to sleep can reduce night terrors a lot. As for Jace, his night terrors seem to have stopped on their own. He hasn't had one in a while, but I guess when he has another one, we'll kind of know how to deal with it better.